Okay, this is take like, I don't know, six or seven. Uh, I have to open my garage door to get more light. Uh, kids keep driving by. UPS truck comes up with, or, you know, shows up with Amazon packages for my wife. Dog barks, you fucking name it. Um, best one, though, is the neighbors who still pay to have their dead lawn mowed for over two years now. They don't water the lawn. But whatever, that's here, neither here nor there. So what you're staring at here are some components for a Ford 4.6 connecting rods and pistons, uh, aftermarket manly stuff, good stuff, OEM Ford stuff. And you're sitting here wondering what the hell are we staring at here or why are we staring at this stuff? Because I'm going to show you that contrary to what the internet will tell you in some forums, these rods don't weigh a billion grams more than these rods. Okay. You'll hear a lot of people, or you'll read about a lot of people claiming that these rods have a bunch of extra rotating mass. Um, they weigh, you know, 40, 50. I've even seen people claim they weigh 80 grams more than the stock powder forged uh, connecting rods. And I'm going to show you this just isn't true. Um, I've been arguing with people about this for quite some time now. Um, and I said, screw it, and decided to make a video. So, um, the only real differences here are the piston. Pistons are different sizes. Um, this is a 3.572, so 20 thousandths overbore. This is 3.552 stock, okay? But you'll see, I'm gonna show you, this piston actually weighs more than this piston. Um, I know it's kinda, kinda crazy, but again, we got different materials, okay? There's, there's, as some people like to say, there's different amounts of gravity in, in that one than there is in this one, okay? But I'm gonna start off with my scale. Okay, now this is not a calibrated scale. It's not the most accurate thing in the world, and I know this, um, but it is digital and it is repeatable, okay? Um, there's no trickery here. There's no, I'm, I'm gonna show you that I haven't added any kind of a tear weight to this thing. Um, I do have some plastic on here because I don't wanna have to clean it off, you know, greasy junk off my scale and whatnot because uh, this is used in the kitchen. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and turn it on. I'm gonna weigh a tap. Okay, so you'll see it's zeroed out, completely zeroed. Add the tap, 30 grams, okay? Add eh, 29, okay? So I'm gonna hit tear, and then remove the tap. Shows negative 29 grams. Okay, that proves to you that there's no trickery here, okay? Because if it was, and this thing would start up and say negative, or show a negative, okay? Which I can't do anyway, really, with this thing, because it just shuts off on its own and resets. So now we're gonna start off with zero grams again. And I'm gonna weigh the supposed beast that weighs a billion freaking grams that'll rip itself apart, okay, under high RPM. And I think you're gonna be a little shocked here when we compare them. 609 grams, okay? This is, I usually get 608, 609 every time I weigh this damn thing, okay? And here I'm gonna show you some repeatability here. Same position, 609 grams. See that right there? Okay, so now we're gonna go to the stock connecting rod. Now, according to, you know, again, people on the internet forums, this thing should weigh nothing in comparison to the H-beam. Absolutely freaking nothing, right? 613 grams. Four gram, oh, 612. Let's see if it gives us 612 again. I'm gonna say 613. This thing's kind of funky. 613, okay, so take 613, we'll, we'll go with the highest of the two numbers, okay? And that's a whopping four gram difference. Now both these rods are being weighed with their rod bolts, with their respective rod bolts, okay? You see ARP 8740s right there, no ARP 2000s with this one. Um, but <clears throat> um, you'll notice that this one, if you look, there's a flat spot right here where there was some balancing done. There was some grinding done when this went to the machine shop, okay? Um, so that could easily account for the, you know, three to four grams of difference we have between the two rods. Um, now watch, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna weigh these pistons, turn the scale back on, zero out for me. And you're gonna be kinda, you might be a little shocked to find out that, and I'm gonna show it to you, this piston actually weighs more, 360 grams. Uh, oh, 361. Sorry, so here, let's try this again. Boom. 360, 361, take whatever number you want, okay? 
But again, I'm just showing you the scales repeatable. Now watch this. This is another thing. People claim that, you know, forged pistons weigh a ton more and all this other crap. And, you know, that's another thing you got to consider when it comes to reciprocating mass and blah, blah, blah. Watch this. 352. So you got 10, 11 gram difference. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going the other way. You got nine. Okay. So you got a whopping whopping eight, nine grams of difference between this forged piston that is supposedly heavy as shit compared to that stock stuff right there, which is cast or hypotectic, whatever you want to call it. Um, so it's just something to think about, you know, when, when you're sitting there reading about how much these beasts supposedly weigh compared to, you know, these spindly little fucking rods right here. Um, some of the people out there on those internet forums don't know what the hell they're talking about. Um, and honestly, after, you know, reading things over and over, <clears throat> over the years, reading different threads and stuff on various forums, I realized that arguing with those people really isn't even worth it in most cases because um, basically they're going to go on believing whatever they believe unless you can flat out prove them wrong. And in a lot of discussions, it just, it's not always possible. Um, but one thing I want to talk about too here is that this rod, this 4.6 rod, is essentially the exact same rod that is in the new 5 liter. I know you're thinking, bullshit. Uh, yeah, but trust me, it's true. You go out there and you look and you'll, you'll find that the new 5 liter rods, which are now what used to be the boss rods, okay, there was a change back, I forget, I forget what year, but there was a change where all the 5 liter rods all became the boss rods because they were a little bit stronger. But what they did is they took a lot of meat um, out of this um, out of this big end here, and they moved it up into the beam area to give it some more um, some more rigidity, some more strength. Um, those are decent rods. Um, I don't really care for them in boosted applications. Um, if you do some searching, you'll find that there's been some 302 Boss 302 uh, connecting rod failures out there um, with guys who have tracked their cars. But what I'm getting at here is those cars. Those engines were durability tested to some stupid RPM, um, and they are they weigh the same as this rod. Those rods are considered drop-in replacements for this rod. So it's something to think about here is that you know the guys that are claiming that there's all this rotating mass and this thing is you know going to destroy your engine if you if you spin it too fast, it's just simply not true. Yes, the yes, there's a you know the the weight or the balance. The mid balance point is going to be different on this rod because you can tell there's not as much meat here in the big end as there is uh, here. But the fact of the matter is the, the the rotating mass is still the same. Okay, so my rationale is behind that: if the boss rods at that weight can handle those stupid RPMs reliably, reliably, as I say, because you know, again, there's been some failures of guys who actually track their boss their boss cars. Um, then this should be just fine at those RPM, at those elevated RPMs too. And there's also something you might want to look at um, <clears throat> when you know contemplating buying those boss rods is that um, what was it SCCA or no it wasn't SCCA. Uh, there was a sanctioning body in which the uh, boss cars were racing in, and they made a change to the rules to allow the boss guys to run this connecting rod. Um, it actually, I believe, memory serves correctly, it actually calls this rod by part number that they can use it as a drop-in replacement for that boss rod. Um, I'm not going to get into, you know, boss rod strength versus this, but the way I look at it is if there was a change um, in a sanctioning body to allow to run this rod, then maybe those boss rods aren't as strong as everybody claims they are. Um, they may be, you know, strong for a certain period of time, but after a point, they get weak, okay? It's, it's painfully apparent, um, especially when you consider that there have been, there's verifiable engine failures out there. Um, so just think about that next time you start seeing people talking about H-beam versus I-beams and all the f crazy rotating uh, mass. I've even, I've even had uh, a, an engineer try to tell me that there was more weight here than there is here. And I've told him that, no, he's full of it. Uh, I, well, I didn't say it like that. I said, no, you're wrong. It's it's just that that 
it looks it looks like it has more gravity. There's not it doesn't really weigh any different. Um, and I actually took a picture of these two rods on a scale, and he he called BS, and I, and I told him, do you want me to bring this stuff to work and let you fucking weigh it yourself? And at that point, he was like, oh okay, maybe I was wrong. He's like, yeah, you're dead wrong. Um, I don't really I try not to talk to that guy much about engines anymore. Um, he's not really a an engine guy. He just kind of saw what I was looking at one day at lunch um, on the internet. So again, don't go out there and believe everything you hear about H beam versus I beam and weights. Um, and, you know, again, when it comes to that internet stuff, kind of take everything with a grain of salt because there's a lot of guys out there that don't really know as much as they claim to know.